Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalyze It Done. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and now let's continue with the game between Flipstep and Fail Thoughts on Adansonia. Brand new map, which I'll just go over because I've shown it exactly once when I was playing it, and it's pretty cool. So, you have 11 save expansions. I, when I mentioned it last time, my first impression was that you had 8 save expansions, but that's because the image I looked at didn't quite point out that this is a giant cliff, and this is a giant cliff, and this is a giant cliff that's entirely passable only by all terrain units. Like, this thing, you cannot pass by it unless you're playing spiders or jump bots. Which, admittedly, I was playing spiders, so these weren't safe, but still. Unless playing spiders or jump bots, which in this case, both players are playing jump bots, you can't get to this. So in this case, there's only these eight, but yeah. So eight safe expansions, and then eight in the middle, and three that are all-terrain safe. Like, or rather, safe against everything but all-terrain. So the way this map is, as far as I can tell, is very center-focused. I mean, with all-terrain, you have much more options in getting up this cliff and going down through this section here, over the southwest or northeast of the main base. And, of course, you can also you can start where the players have, or you can also start in this tiny little island to the northeast or southwest. That's more of a team thing. And you can also see these inlets here, or fjords, actually. These fjords, you can put ships and amphib units and other stuff through these fjords. So if players build a shipyard, that makes perfect sense. Like, they can go through here, they can pass into the fjords, they can bombard everything. At least I'm pretty sure this is what a fjord is. I'm not in Norway. If any Norwegians can tell me whether or not this is a fjord, because I'm pretty sure it is, but it might just be an inlet. I mean, granted, it is kind of an inlet. Oh, and then they have this section here with the little peninsula. Anyhow... That's also true for the center. So ships can go... I think ships can go through the center. Or at least part of the center. This area here, probably not. But yeah, so that's a neat little thing about this map. It is built for mixed play. But both players going for all-terrain, because that's, like I said, an easy way to avoid giving your opponent these three metal extractors. Granted, this map is fairly new, so the metagame isn't well-developed on it. However, I just want to see how this plays out. Like, how Flipstep and Felthas deal with this, because they are going to be playing this map... And I'm not sure how new it is to them. Because it's a pretty new map. And I okay, guess oh, there's an advantage to the jump bots. They can just jump over the fjord. Oh. Oops. And there we go. Yeah, the one downside with jump bots is that they do have to use their jump to get down from here. So... Spiders have a bit of an easier time here because they can just go up and down and up and down. In case there are defending units down here, they can go up and down those hills for cover. Jump bots, not quite so much. Still, that is an advantage. Felthos going for quick scouting. Flipstep doesn't really know what Felthos is up to, actually. They don't know that Felthos has also gone for jump bots, and they're basically running a mirror match right now. They do now. I mean, they did just see that puppy, and they should know. Yeah, oh, jump bots. Jump bot versus jump bot. My opponent was thinking the exact same thing as me. Oh, wait, no, 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 never mind. Flipstip knows. Failthos doesn't. Right now, Failthos does not know what Flipstip is up to. They have no idea what they're up to. They have no reason to believe. They just know that Flipstip built a defender, which means they're playing 0k. And Failthos even pointed this out. Like, Failthos right now, they know nothing. Like I said, they know there is a defender. That's it. However, they aren't going for this expansion over to the northeast yet. They aren't super confident that they're going for the back expansion, the safe one. Now, if Flipstep was going for Amphib and they went around the back, that would not be a safe move. Because they'd just be able to go up here and smash everything up. However, luckily for Failthoss, Flipstep is in fact going for Jump Bots, so these expansions are unsafe. And the expansions at the back are safer. Not necessarily safe, just safer. Safe enough. I guess, you could say. The Flipstip... Flipstip a bit ahead right now. Felthos... Okay, Flipstip ahead for... For metal, not for energy. Why are they not reclaiming? There is a Freaker right here. There's 700, me 700 energy right here they can reclaim. There's giant forest in the back that they can reclaim. And now, people know. Now everyone knows what everyone's up to. Two and a half minutes, or almost three minutes into the game, Failthos learns what Flipstip is up to. And learns that these back expansions were in fact safe and not actually a death trap. 
like I said, that could have been the opposite. That's actually an interesting thing about this map, which I'm really hoping will be exploited. Is that if you don't know what your opponent's up to, there is that idea that you're not entirely sure whether going in the back is safe. You gotta kinda defend against this fjord, and of course, the front, you gotta defend against the all-terrain section. I'm curious to see how that's going to affect things. I mean, in the opening, obviously, is a question of basically what are you building? It's like, what is your factory? So scouting is going to be important, but I don't see it being that big of a deal. Like, yeah, you could rush in and catch them with their pants down, assuming their pants aren't back down and they haven't defended the area. As you can see, Flipstep has just fine. Felthos actually hasn't. One Lotus, okay, that's fine against a handful of Pyros, but if it was half a dozen ducks coming up here, that Lotus would be dead. On the other hand, the all-terrain mexes are... They, they're a threat now. And Felthos knows it. But now if Flipstep were to switch over to ships, or switch over to Amphib, or switch over to... I guess hovers? Then they'd be able to deal with this. I wouldn't switch to hovers, though. I don't think most of this is vehicle pathable. This ramp, I doubt it. This ramp is. And I'm pretty sure the shallows are. But yeah, Amphib will be a switch that... That's really a mix-up switch. I don't know that that would be done. But maybe. Just for that... Just for that rear attack. Or just, being, just for being able to deal with the sea. Because there's a giant ocean here. Like, this is a big island. Or, well... Sort of an archipelago. And these are tidal flat, so I'll just call it an island. Still, that's... Well, that's defended. And Feldos knows Flipstip wants to attack this. And Flipstip... Actually doesn't seem to be suspicious... Doesn't seem to suspect that Felthos will attack over here at that... The, excuse me, I've forgotten how to speak. When I learn how to speak, I shall start again. The plateau. <laughs> this forward plateau. That's what it is. Anyway, as I was saying, Felthos is not Flipsip's concern. Flipsip does not think Felthos is going to attack their plateau, and Felthos correctly believes that Flipsip is going to attack their plateau. Flipsip's well, actually lost a lot of... Like, they're donating a lot of metal to this. Almost 400 metal that didn't... Just been donated right now to Failthos. Flipstep coming in one at a time. That's... Ooh. Firewalker in from Failthos. That plateau is pretty well defended, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But Firewalker coming in from Failthos. Flipstep, what are they doing? They're continuing, as far as I can tell, entirely for Pyros. While Failthos going for Jack Placeholder Firewalker combo... Placeholder Firewalker alone is dangerous. And the Jackson as well for the extra bit of defensive power. Eesh. Flipstep does have the economic advantage, though. They can switch out to whatever they want, getting the Caretakers up, and that will help, at least for the Pyro numbers. I don't see... Oh, there it is. Air Plant has been planned. That's getting started. The question is, are we seeing Thunderbirds or Ravens? Or, I guess, Phoenixes, but... Phoenixes against Pyros are not really the best idea. They don't light on fire. Pyros do not burn. Which makes sense. But yeah, Pyros do not ignite. They get damaged by fire and that's it. They don't get set on fire. So the Firewalker's not a terrible idea because it has a lot of direct damage, but the Phoenix would be a terrible idea. And Flipstep, I mean, at this point, they are... That factory's done, isn't it? Okay, they're not wasting build power, but yeah, the factory's done. They they kind of need to start building stuff here. I'm not sure what they're going to build with it. Pyro's coming for Flipstep, and... Now there's that placeholder. It's coming in. It is on fire, though, but... Placeholders, plural, my mistake. I mean, Failthos has pretty much gone for the counter. They've gone for the skirmisher and lockdown combo. While Flipstep just stuck on Raiders. They're just attacking and attacking and attacking. At this point, that's not going to work. Felthos is well defended. They've got that handled. And okay, there we go. Now Flipstep is finally selecting that factory. And Phoenixes. Interesting. I guess they're going to try to go for the wind generators? Of which there are none? I don't entirely understand what the reasoning for that is. Granted, Pyros aren't... Actually, yeah, I see why the reasoning is. Pyros are immune to fire. Firewalkers, placeholders, moderators, and jacks, however, are not. All these can burn. I'm not sure if that's entirely their thinking, but that will work. 
The one downside, of course, being that moderators can still hit air pretty effectively. But they're gonna need more than one. It looks like they only have the, well, two at this point before the Swifts come up. Still running low on metal for dealing with this. What are they spending? Let's see metal extractors. They've got commanders building up stinger. Okay, that's that's a fair amount of stuff actually. Hmm. So at this point, Felthos is... Well... Felthos is still behind economically. That's a worthy point to make. Flipstep has pretty much taken the center. Now, that's not the entirety of their 20 metal advantage. A lot of it's overdrive, but... They're still taking a lot of the center. And here come the Phoenixes. This is what they're used for. Ooh, nice worker snipe. Got rid of one of them, damaged the other one. Unfortunately, didn't deal a huge amount of damage to the army. But, ah, that placeholder, only one of the placeholders took damage. Still not enough. This is where a Thunderbird would be super useful. But no, they're going for Ravens instead. So Flipstep going for the Ravens. Are they, they're not building an air pad, though. That is really bizarre. I mean, they're going for a lot of Ravens. They have a lot of, well, a couple of Phoenixes, but they're clearly going a pretty air-heavy play. And they aren't building anything for that. And, okay, here we go. Amphib Factory. They are going for the Fjord attack. Or I think they're going for the Fjord attack. Why else would they go for an Amphib Factory? They want to go in the water. They want to go around the back. And Felthos gone for gunships. Getting a bunch of Tridents out to deal with everything that's being built up so far. Because that's what you do. Tridents, well, that's what they do. They deal with air. And now to get rid of this Firewalker... This is kind of overkill. I think they're really worried. Oh, yeah, they're going to be worried about the moderators. Flips up very worried about the moderators, and rightly so, but gets rid of the Firewalker. Anyway, opening this up, allowing the Pyros to probably get close enough they can deal with most of this. But the Ravens, are they going to be finished off? This one has 145 health left. Got out of there alive with 14% health. That being said, though, it's really good for Flips that they switched over to Amphib. Ooh, going for a Grizzly. Is that for a direct assault? I mean, they could do a direct assault with it, but it's Amphib. They could... Oh, I know. Oh, what they could do... They could use the Grizzly up... No, they're going for Mass Grizzly. I was going to say, Grizzly up front, ducks around the back. Two-pronged attack that takes advantage of the map geometry. I don't see that they're doing that. They're going for Mass Grizzly. And they're going for Thunderbird. Okay, so they've got the Thunderbird now. That's exactly what they need. Thunderbird this entire army, and then I guess the Grizzly comes in and finishes it off along with the Pyros? That seems sensible. Phoenix, did you know what's there, right? That, that There's tridents there. That Phoenix is dead. It's not going to get anything. Yeah, it just... That was... That was 72 metal donated to Failthos. Not... Or Failthos. I keep forgetting it. It's Failthos. I keep thinking the A's in front of the E. Failthos. Come that now. It sounds better than Failthos. Yeah, Failthos is... Well, they're scouting it out. They see the Grizzly. The Grizzly is almost done. Can, I think Fjolthos should be able to get in. Smash to the factory after the Grizzly's done. The Grizzly, however, able to get some damage in. And nice Thunderbirding. The Jacks are in front, but they should be dealt with pretty quickly by Flipstiff's commander. And the Grizzly. Nice push. Everything back with a Pyro getting rid of all the Thunderbirded units. Fjolthos coming in with the Defenders. Making sure to protect their line. This is where the attack along the backside would be perfect. The second Grizzly, if that goes into the water and around the back and up the fjord, that will probably end the game. Fjolthos is not expecting that. At all. They're not even really protecting their half of the map very well. This defender line is good. It's dealing with the tidal flats for the most part, but anything coming along here? That's undefended. That's not dealt with at all. The only problem with the Grizzlies, however, is the expense. Flipstep going for the Firewalker. We just see a Scuttle coming in as well. Where is that Scuttle being used? I want to keep an eye on that Scuttle, because that Scuttle is going to do something probably to the Grizzly. But Scuttles, Roaches, Ticks, you got to keep an eye on those things. They do amazing game-turning things sometimes. Oh, wait. I needed to keep an eye on the Scuttle. Eyes on the scuttle. Maybe not. It's going to do something amazing. That's what scuttles do. It's probably going to blow up this grizzly. Of course, the second grizzly is there. 
dealing with it. I have first ones that have health. Doing not much to these brawlers, really. It's actually getting rather heavily damaged by them. In fact, that Scuttle's not even going to do much, to be honest. That Scuttle still coming in, but a Scuttle can almost on its own get rid of a Grizzly. It deals 8,000 damage. Like, that's that's enough to get rid of Grizzly with a bit of damage on the Grizzly. No, Flips have going for the direct attack. I am very surprised. I mean, they clearly are aware that they can attack the back. They just have with the air units. I'm not sure if they're thinking about the map geometry, though. They may just be too concerned that a frontal assault is going to come in from Fieldthos, and they won't be able to deal with it unless they have all of the units on the front line. Not an unfair concern, but at the same time, it's also... There's the Scuttle! Scuttle's coming in, and... Ooh, the Grizzly is a bit too healthy to be killed. Almost. Almost got it, but at just too much health. 500 health. Ooh, 300, 100. Oh, it still isn't going to die? Just barely getting repaired. 100 health. That's still close, though. A good Fireworker Shot might be able to take it out. And... Ooh. Got rid of one of the repairing workers, but not enough to finish it off. And I don't see any second scuttle. So that, that Grizzly is pretty safe. Yeah, that Grizzly is safe. Another worker dies, but the Grizzly is fine. So unfortunately for Phil, for Phil Thos, but fortunately for Flipstip, that Grizzly was just healthy enough to survive. Very close, though. That was way too close. Phil Thos coming around the back. Flipstip, not especially... Oh, okay, somewhat well defended. Okay, they're not especially well equipped to deal with this. They do have the Swifts. The Swifts are the real answer. The Ravens, not real. Oh, sorry, the Ravens. The Ravens, obviously not. The Razors, I mean, not really. The Defenders, sort of. The Swifts, yes. Actually, the Lotus as well. These... The thing with Banshees is that they aren't particularly vulnerable to Razors. They can just fly by them. Or actually, they have enough health to destroy them. Like, a group of Banshees attacking a Razor will win. The Razor will lose. However, with Swifts and Defenders and a bunch of other... And Lotuses as well... As you can clearly see, the Banshees don't quite survive as well. But yes, that Razor, not a bad idea in general, but against Banshees, isn't quite as effective. Thankfully, backup defenses were in place, so Flipstip survived that attack pretty handily. I think they lost one Metal Extractor, and that was about it. And a couple defenses. So they're doing quite well for themselves. And, oh, these ducks are going to the front lines! This is perfect backline units! I don't know, I think Flipstip just doesn't quite realize that this is something you can come in on. Or they think that Feltos, Feltos, I mean, has too much in the back to defend against it. Which they don't. Really. And at this stage of the game, four ducks is an acceptable loss for scouting purposes. I think Flipstip's just pretty sure that the game is won. Oh. I did not notice the Dante. Thank you, Anakin, for pointing that out. There's a minute left for Feltos getting a Dante out, and Flipstip not going for that at all. Producing from all their factories, not going for the Dante. Not going for the Strider Hub at all. Nope, that's the only Strider Hub in the game. Bildos, however, is really on the back foot right now. This Dante, it's got to get pretty lucky. The Trident's coming in as well, which are good for the anti here, but honestly, at this point, what's needed is some kind of crowd control. Scuttle's not bad, not really crowd control. Firewalker would be great. Brawler would be okay. Yeah, crowd control is the thing that's needed. And Flipstip, sorry, Flipstip taking on the commander, Philthos without a commander. Surprisingly, at this stage of the game, I think it's going to be important. This is fairly late in the game, but plus 30 metal? That's kind of on the edge of commander importance. The Dante, however, up and running in three seconds. Now we go. See what it can do. In Philthos. They're basically depending on this thing. Their, their game depends on this. And I gotta say, I'm quite impressed by how much Filthos has managed to stay in being behind economically pretty much the entire game. And... Are we gonna go? Gonna go? Is it in range? Just, ooh, just barely out of range. Doesn't quite hit them. That Scuttle getting decloaked in the process. Those Firewalkers being a major problem. That's going to avoid the Firewalkers. This Grizzly is 
Ooh, this Grizzly is going to be damaged enough that it's actually vulnerable. Now, is Feltas going for another one? No, Feltas not going for another Dante. Pretty much expecting to win on this alone, and Scuttle comes in, hits both Grizzlies. Quite nice, and one of them on fire as well, but I don't think it's going to die. And the Dante going out with the Dante down, Feltas will probably surrender. Ouch. Yep. GG. There it is. That's the surrender. Very good effort there, but it looks like the main problem was that middle. Flipstep got the middle and basically held it. Feltas didn't really take their side of the middle. Didn't really harass all that much, actually. I'm a bit surprised at that. But yeah, Flipstep just harassing a lot more, attacking a lot more. They, Feltas just... They were really in their base. I think they were trying to figure out what to do with the map. And... Yeah, I'm still kind of surprised Flipstep didn't attack from, the, from behind, but didn't seem to make a difference. Feltas couldn't have gotten away with it at this point. That's the one thing. Feltas, they could not really have gotten away with it just because there was so much defenses already. There were the bombers. The bases had plenty of defenses already, as it was. Sending in a dozen ducks would have been a lot from the front lines, especially given that Feltas had the economic disadvantage. But taking at the center was proven to be very difficult. I'm a little surprised Feltas didn't go that hard for overdrive, though. I mean, they had a fair amount of power here, but... They didn't really have a lot to connect their grids. So you can see that Flipstip did have this geo plant connected all the way back to their main base, or the, not the way the main base, but the secondary base in the back. But there's nothing here. Feltas didn't even go for the geo plant, let alone have anything to connect back to it. So I don't, I don't know that. I mean, there's obviously one energy pile on here. So they had a bit of a grid connection, but given that they were kind of behind economically, otherwise I'm a bit surprised they didn't go for that. Anyway, that was that. So, one last game tonight is going to be between Anarchid and Feltas on La Isla Bonita, which I... Or Ila, I guess. La Isla Bonita, which is going to be... Is that a three-player map? I don't think I've seen this used for 1v1 before. 16 by 16. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit older than, I don't know, at Ansonia. But it's a very similar style, aesthetically. That'll be interesting. So stay tuned for that. That'll be up in just a moment.